Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah So we're going to start this, if you will, these quick sessions uh, reading a hadith to complement our other sittings. So these are the family tahara series, if you will, a hadith from Umda Tahkam and just gaining some quick f benefits to highlight what we're studying as far as our uh, fiqh of of uh, purification in Salat. طيب, the first hadith on Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما عمال بن يد وإنما لكل مرى مناوى فمن كانت هجته لله ورسوله فهجته لله ورسوله ومن كان هجته للدنيا يسيبها ومرأة ينكحها فهجته لماها جرى إليه أخرجاه This hadith in Bukhari and Muslim The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said uh Verily, actions are tied to the intentions, and everyone should get that for which he intended. Therefore, he who migrates uh, for Allah and his messenger, then he has migrated for Allah and his messenger. And he who migrates to take some woman in marriage uh, or for some worldly gain, then he will get that for which he migrated for. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. Ahabat the uh, benefits of this hadith with regards to purification, what we're talking about, is that the asl in... Uh, in our ibadah, in all ibadah, is ikhlas, sincerity. And that means that's your intention. That has to do with your intention. This hadith is all about the intention, which is from the asl of the religion in Islam. This is a asl min usul ad -deen. This is a foundation principle from the foundation uh, in the religion of Islam. That ikhlas, ikhlas lillah. That in order to have all your deeds accepted, you have to have proper intention. You have to be worship. You have to have sincerity to Allah. You're worshiping only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And the other condition is that you're following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in prayer, your intention, you're worshiping Allah, and you're following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in order to prayer. Uh, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that deeds without the proper intention. Uh, uh, without the the intent to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they are they're wasted. So if you make wudu, like we're talking about wudu, and you make wudu and you uh, but your intention is not even there. You're not there to uh wash yourself uh for prayer, your intention's not even on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all you've done is wash your limbs. Another benefit of this uh hadith is this hadith shows us that the intention is a condition for all acts of worship. Regardless of whether that's prayer or tawaf, hajj, umrah, uh, jihad, fasting, zakat, all acts of worship, you have to have the intention that you're worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to have intention is uh, a condition of that act of ibadah, of all acts of ibadah. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith is this hadith shows us that deeds are distinguished by the intention. Deeds are distinguished by the intention. For example, if you are going to make, you, you go to make wudu, but your intention is not there. You go, you do all the acts, but you're thinking about something else and your intention is not to worship Allah with this, not to prepare yourself for prayer. You do this, you, you wash your nose, your mouth, you wipe your head, you you clean your face, everything, you do everything for wudu. But your intention was not to do worship. You just did it out of a habit. And then you pray. Your prayer is not accepted. You did not do, you did not have intention. There are, there is a school, and I believe it's the Ahnaf, the Hanafiya, who say that the intention for the wudu is not accepted. But anyway, the, the aqol or rajah is that you have to have intention uh, in making wudu. So, it also, the wudu, uh, the intention which we find in this hadith, it distinguishes between acts which are similar to actions that you do. So if you do that same action and your intention is to uh, clean your hands and just clean your arms and, and those parts, but it wasn't to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not accepted as wudu as well. You must have your intention. And if, for example, you pray, but you do those poses like you're doing yoga, Okay, you're doing the exact salat, you're praying uh, salat, you're making ruku and sujood, you're doing all those things, but you're really just doing it to stretch your back. Your intention was not to worship Allah. Even if you did 
the rakat and everything exactly the same, it will not be accepted as prayer without the intention. So it's very important. In the ma'amala biniyat, going back to this hadith, verily actions are tied to the intentions. That's very important, and that shows us ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is uh, wajib in all of our deeds. Also, this hadith shows us the mishru'iyah, uh, to make hijrah from the land of disbelief to the land of belief. And also, that requires intention. So, for example, I've thought about this many times. I've lived here in Saudi Arabia and other places many years. But my intention was not to make hijrah. Not to make hijrah and live here or live just to make live in the Muslim lands. I had an intention to come back. Even if I live here 20, 30, 40 years and die, I would not get the reward if my intention was not there. So it's a, a serious thing when you make hijrah. Whenever acts, all acts of ibadah require intention. Uh, one other quick hadith on Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yaqbal Allah salata ahadakum idha ahtada hatta yatawadda'u the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said verily la yaqbal Allah salata ahadakum the prayer of any one of you is not accepted until they make wudu this hadith shows us that you must have tahara you must have purification ablution when you're going to pray your prayer is not accepted at all without tahara, as long as you have the qudra. Of course, you're, if you're in jail, you're tied up, you're in prison, you can, and you are like locked up, shackled, and you can't make tahara, then you, you'll be rewarded for your intention. And you pray in, your, in, in the state that you're in. But if you have the qudr, you have the ability to get water and make tahara or make tayammum, then you must, and that removes the hadith. And we'll talk about this in the next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.